Here's Brody Brazil. So I've encountered this phenomenon like at least several times in my real life. And then I came across an article that mentioned the exact same thing. And I was like, that's crazy. I, I thought I might be the only one that was experiencing this, but apparently I'm not. They called it precision waking. And I was like, oh, I instantly understand what this article is talking about. By the way, it came from NPR and part of it goes like this. Maybe this happens to you sometimes too. You go to bed with some morning obligation on your mind, maybe a flight to catch or an important meeting. The next morning you wake up on your own and discover that you've actually beat your alarm clock by just a minute or two. All right, how many times has that happened? Set it for 6.15 and you're up at 6.13, like bright, early, ready to go. Wait a second, how did I know? How did my body know that it was almost 6.15? What's going on here? Is it pure luck or perhaps you possess some uncanny ability to wake up precisely on time without help? It turns out many people have come to Dr. Robert Stickgold over the years wondering about this phenomenon. Quote, this is one of those questions in the study of sleep where everybody in the field seems to agree that what's obviously true couldn't be, says Stickgold, who's a cognitive neuroscientist at Harvard Medical School and Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. So, yeah, I think we've all been through this. I don't even need to explain much further. You've had this happen to you, likely. You wake up like, wait, how did my body know? And it's usually in a situation where you've set your clock earlier for something and you mentally might be thinking about it, it's going to happen the next day. So your mind might be racing or stressed. More on that in just a second. But I think we all know in, in terms of precision waking that, yes, we as humans have an internal body clock. We generally know without even looking outside or looking at a clock, what time of day it is, how long we've been awake, what certain things happen at different times of the day. That's just inherent over years and decades of living. We also have in the built-in circadian rhythms, right? When it's bright and sunny outside, we might have a hard time falling asleep. When it's dark outside and you've had a full day, it might be difficult to stay awake. And those circadian rhythms... Over time, they obviously regulate us. They take care of us. Those are very good things to have. And our bodies function optimally under very regimented patterns. And I know a lot of sleep experts have, have recommended this to go to bed and wake up generally at the same time every single day. Your body will acclimate to that. It will best serve you and suit you over time. But let's go back to this for a second. What about those earlier wake-up calls. Why does it always seem like, like you would expect that if I set my alarm clock every day for seven in the morning, which I basically do, that it's no surprise that a lot of days I might wake up between 6.50 and 7 all on my own. But what about the days where I roll back, roll back the clock to like 5.30 because I have to get up for a flight that day, which I don't normally do? What about those days? That's kind of the question here. Stress hormones might play a role. This is back from the NPR article. In the late 90s, a group of researchers in Germany wanted to figure out how expecting to wake up influenced what's known as the HPA axis, a complex system in the body that deals with our response to stress and involves the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, and the adrenal glands. Jan Born, one of the study's authors, says they knew that levels of a hormone that's stored in the pituitary gland called ACTH start increasing in advance of the time you habitually wake up, which in turn signals the adrenal glands to release cortisol, a so-called stress hormone that helps you wake up, among other things. So this is your body being a little bit thrown off already and kind of actively waking up. And this is another thing I know I have. If I set that clock or what did I say, 5.30? I might wake up at 3.30, take a glance. Nope, not time yet. Go back to bed. 4.30? Oh, nope. And I'm not trying to wake up early. It's just my body and literally in the back of my mind, it knows today's going to be different. You're thinking about this. Even though your, your body and your awareness is shut off, your brain is, is not stopping the thought about this. And that's obviously chemically an issue here too. Uh, they did a sleep experiment of 15 people, which is not a huge sample size, but it, this is interesting. They took 15 people who normally get up between 7 and 7.30 in the morning, and they had them sleep in a lab for three nights. And then they took those 15 people and divided them into three groups. Some that would wake up at 6 in the morning via a wake-up call. Others that wouldn't get a wake-up call till 9, right? So they got to sleep in as opposed to the hour earlier. 
and a third group, which they told, we're going to wake you up at nine, but then they actually woke them up at six, right? That's the throw off there to see that, you know, they were expecting to wake up later fully and they were surprised to know that, oh, you're actually getting up an hour before you normally do. So you totally understand what they were trying to accomplish there. The subjects who anticipated waking up at six, right, the ones they told, had a noticeable or notable rise in the concentration of ACTH starting at about 5 a.m., so one hour before. It was, is, it was as if their bodies knew they had to get up earlier, says Bourne. This is a good adaptive preparatory response of the organism, says Bourne, with a chuckle. It's obviously a joke because then you have enough energy to cope with getting up and you can make it until you have your first cup of coffee. End quote. That same rise in stress hormones before waking up was not recorded in members of the group who did not plan to get up early, but were surprised with a 6 a.m. wake up call. The third group, that one that was assigned for a 9 a.m. wake up time, didn't have a pronounced rise in ACTH an hour before getting up. Bourne says that suggests that this was simply too late in the morning to see that same effect. Like they had no rush. They knew, hey, we're going to get to sleep in. And they did. And there was no problems with that. So precision waking, you know, it's not been proven. I don't think there's any exact reason or, or sense of why this happens when it does, other than it does happen to a lot of us, myself included, probably you too. We clearly know what things set us off and why would you be setting your alarm clock for some super early time if it wasn't for the thought of something stress inducing or something that your mind might be racing about or can't take, you know, its thoughts off of. So how many times have we looked up and seen 657 when we set our alarms for seven? Yeah. If that's your normal time, a lot, but it's weird how it also happens when you change that time even earlier by a couple hours, or if you take a nap in the middle of the day and a time you're not normally sleeping. So let me know, does this happen to you? Put it in the comment section below, subscribe to this channel and thumbs up on this video if you actually enjoyed it. <laughs>